Welcome to the historic McConkie One Room School Project. We are here at the Charles County Fairgrounds. This project started in 2015 as a result of retired and working volunteers from the community who were interested in pursuing and using information to enhance the school and its contribution to the community. The McConkie School actually was built in the area of Welcome at the intersection of Blossom Point and Port Tobacco Roads in 1912. It was used as a one-room school for African-American students during segregation and Jim Crow that existed here in Charles County and throughout the nation. The school actually shut down in 1952 and was sold when the school system decided to build consolidated schools. It was then used as a rental property through the 1980s when at that time it was scheduled to be demolished because it had deteriorated so badly. Two volunteers and board members here at the fair, George Dyson and Mitch Diggs, were interested in preserving the school and organized a committee that paid for and actually physically moved the school to the location that you see it on today. In 2015, uh, several of us were volunteering and Mr. Dyson asked us if we could pursue expanding a program, an educational program for the community since so many people did not know about or appreciate the value of the school. And we decided that we would develop an educational program that focused on not only the history of the school itself as a one-room school for African-American students, but we would also focus on local, that is Charles County, African-American history. In addition to those educational programs, we have been working very hard to apply for and winning grants locally through the Office of Tourism and through the state African-American heritage uh, organization. You see here in front of you the result of one of the Office of Tourism grants which focused on the history of the teacher who was here for 30 years, Dr. Edna Warren Simmons, and her role in enhancing the education of local students. And now our big grant, as we call it, is with the uh, state's African American Heritage Group, and we will be rehabilitating the school. The uh, RFP will be printed very shortly, Cynthia and Bob Sonheimers, the current co-chairs of this committee, are organizing and heading that effort. My name is uh, Bob Sonheimers, this is my wife Cynthia, and we're co-chairs of the McConkie School, One Room School Committee, and we're working on doing a grant from Maryland Historical Trust that we're going to rehabilitate the uh, building and some of the things that need work are the foundational work. We need the, some work on the chimney. We need the windows worked on and do some painting and rest, restoration around. And just to let people know this is, this is a rehabilitation, not a restoration. A, re, a restoration has to be, everything has to be exactly like it was back in uh, 1912 when they had the school. This will be, we'll try to make it as good as we can, but it won't be exactly the same as it, as it was back then. And also it's moved from its original site, which makes it can't be a, restora a restoration either. But we're just hoping this will be like a museum where people can come, uh, maybe do school field trips, like there's one down in Port Tobacco that as a school teacher, I used to take my children there and hopefully come here. And also we have regular events at the, at the fairgrounds, which we've already participated in and uh, just have it as a resource for people to, and to enjoy and come to. I'm Edward Holland, the Public Affairs Officer for the historic McConkey One Room School. I'm the chair of the uh, Community Relations Committee, in which feel free to contact us at any time at 301-848-3476. That's 301-848-3476. If you're interested in volunteering to assist with the school, we have different functions in July, September, of course, when the fairground is open, 
and Chris Kringle uh, in December. So we look forward for additional volunteers. Please come down and see this wonderful school. We have much to offer, especially if you want to be a volunteer. Thank you. Lieutenant J.G. Madeline Maddie Swagel said she had always dreamed of becoming a pilot ever since her parents took her to see the Blue Angels. Swagel became the U.S. Navy's first black female tactical aircraft pilot after she completed her final undergraduate training. The announcement comes more than four decades after women first received their wings in the Navy. Madeline Swagel makes history as U.S. Navy's first black female fighter pilot. Swagel was named a Naval Aviator and awarded her gold Naval Aviator wings with 25 classmates during a small ceremony at Naval Air Station Kingsville in Texas. She also said, it would have been nice to see someone who looked like me in this role. I never intended to be the first. I hope it's encouraging to other people. Swingle graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 2017 and completed initial flight screening at Naval Air Station Pensacola. She completed primary flight training at Naval Air Station Corpus Christi and finished her advanced strike training at Naval Air Station Kingsville. She completed her aircraft carrier qualifications in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Schwagel will now report to the Electronic Attack Squadron 129 at Naval Air Station Whidbey Island in Washington to begin training as an EA-18G Growler pilot. The squadron trains new naval aviators, naval flight officers, and naval air crew in electronic warfare tactics, techniques, and procedures in preparation for their fleet assignments. I think representation is important, she says, because we are a very diverse nation. She also added, I would like everyone to believe that they can achieve whatever they want to do. Every community has a story and these historic markers are really important because it's a small way of sharing that story with the entire county. The village of Pamunkey is an historic African-American enclave established in the late 19th century, which included many successful businesses, churches, schools, and social halls that thrived during an era of Jim Crow and segregation. Important landmarks include the Pamunkey High School, Walton's Market, Metropolitan Church, the Pamunkey Elks Lodge, number 717, the Beehive Masonic Lodge, number 66, Thornton's Funeral Home, and W.P. Jamison's store, just to name a few. Pamunkey is just a, just, just a, I mean, when you say the name Pamunkey, it just does something to you because it's in my bones. Pamunkey means everything to me. I think with the school and the church, that has been uh, the foundation of our life, of, of my life, but I think of most of us in the community. And uh, knowing about the, the village itself, I've learned, you know, learned a lot, but it's, it's everything to me because that's where I was raised, that's where I went to school, that's where I met my friends, family, and um, it's, it's all about Pamunkey. Pamunkey was originally named after the Pamunkey Indians, and it was spelled P-A-M-U-N-K-E-Y. Uh, that was a native tribe that, was, that lived in this area. Time changed the name to the spelling to P-O-M-O-N-K-E-Y. We're not exactly sure why, but the spelling was changed. But Pamunkey has been around a long time, and uh, I guess it was one of the very early settlements in the Charles County area. It was a main thoroughfare for travels between Indian Head and Southern destinations. A lot of traffic came right through Pamunkey that made it a center, a travel way for people that were traveling in, in the county. So the village of Pamunkey is important as an early 20th century um, African-American village that was uh, established and really thrived during an era of uh, segregation. It was established after the Civil War and it grew around um, the what was then called Pamunkey Chapel and has later evolved into the Metropolitan United Methodist Church. 
So that provided an anchor to the community where community members could come after the Civil War and worship together, support one another, and that as an anchor led to um, additional businesses, schools, um, and social institutions that continue to support this African-American community well into the 20th century. My name is Doris Jackson Mason, and I was born in Pamunkey and never f left too long or too far away. And I remember have to walk a mile and a half to catch the school bus. And by us having the secondhand buses, a lot of times it didn't come on time, so you was frozen by the time you got to school. <laughs> and when I got to school, had Miss Coleman, very nice lady, but she gave me a whole lot of love and a whole lot of support. So back them days, the teachers really helped you because all the kids didn't have all the things they need to get through their school lessons, so the teachers looked out for the children, and they really helped you along the way. I was born actually in Indian Head and went to uh, Pamunkey High School, which was the first uh, colored high school in Charles County. Most of us that went to school here, we were uh, we attended school every day. We had several members of our classes that uh, some of us had perfect attendance through all 12 years of schooling. And so that meant that, well, for one thing, you didn't stay home because you stayed home. You had to either be sick or you had to work. But school was uh, our life. And um, between that and the church, but the school itself, that's where we met our friends. We had activities. We had great teachers, uh, great role models, uh, terrific um, basketball and, and ball teams. A lot of memories were here. We held our assemblies, talent shows, uh, many events. But most of all, we had a terrific championship basketball team over all the years, and this is where the games were played. We had a basketball goal at that end, and here is part of the uh, backboard unit that's still in place. Pamunkey uh, is significant to Charles County in that it, it has almost its own little independent area. We had our own grocery store, our own schools, our own churches, our own social organizations. It was just a self-contained area. It was kind of a close-knit community. Everybody knew everybody, black, white, or otherwise. And we got along, I think, pretty good, you know. Uh, the schools were segregated, but on the weekends, a lot of times we would like play football or something. It would be like integrated, you know. By the airport, they had a racetrack, and of course back then the black people couldn't go to the racetrack, so the neighbor had a pear tree. So we would get up in the pear tree to look over at the racetrack on Sundays. But mostly you go to the ball games. Yeah, we had the Monkey Brown baseball team. Uh, one of our members, Darius, had three brothers that played on the team. And we had a lot of friends that played on the team, but you basically had to be a good ball player to even make that team, you know. Like guys my size and all, I didn't even try out for it because we had such good players like her brothers, the Jacksons and the Chases and all. They were like excellent ball players, marshals and all. But everybody went to basically went to the ball game on Sundays. You know, many of us our age, we know the history. We were born here. We lived through it. But those, our, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren are not as familiar. We have a lot of new people that are in the area that they live here, they work other places. They don't have a lot of time to socialize in the area and to know the history. We need to keep it alive because it's, even now, it's a great place to live. It's, it's just important that we, we keep alive the history of, of Pabunki.
The mark is important because it lets others know the importance of this place, that this place is, is significant. And it just points out that here's a, a spot that you need to learn about. And uh, it's something that we all can relate to. And even those that weren't originally from this area, that come through, that visit, that vacation here, to know that there's something here, something special about this place here. I think Pamunkey deserves <laughs> that historical marker because of the, uh, we had choirs that were known, not only locally, but uh, statewide. Uh, we had athletic people who were uh, very exceptional in how they perform and competed uh, statewide as well. And the uh, dedication, especially of the teachers who we had at that school, and being the first uh, to have a high school where we had to really uh, fight, so to speak, to, uh, to get that school going and to keep it going and to uh, be known in the area. Our work in Pamunkey really started several years ago when uh, we enlisted the help of some historians to really document the history of the community. And through that effort, we were able to have some information gathering sessions and invite uh, members of the Pamunkey community to come out and share their history. And all of that kind of culminated in a documentation project where we collected artifacts and information and historic photographs. And then it's a question of what to do with it. And we are working on a National Register nomination for the village of Pamunkey, but we also wanted something a little more concrete in the ground to share history about this place for people that come to Pamunkey but may not be familiar with their history. So that's why we thought about the Historic Marker Program and we put together the history and went ahead and fabricated a historic marker. It's cast aluminum, it's very um, durable, and it's really a nice way to commemorate a site and a local landmark's historic significance. It's really important because it, it really acts, to me, it acts as a landmark for those that don't know about Pamunkey. Um, it's, they can come and visit, and we certainly welcome, and it, it's a great thing to be recognized for. It's important to me because of the struggles uh, that people had to go to to get that school uh, built because they wanted their students as well as people today. They look at education in the area and during that time when Pamunkey was just getting started, the people in this area wanted to be, uh, wanted their students or their sons and daughters to be highly educated. Then this is something I never want to forget. And I tell my little nieces, my god, my grandson, my godson, everybody, but well, I tell them about Pamunkey. I tell them it's a town like Tombstone, too tough to die. Wow, it's right out here by the school. That is it. That is it. And we had, they give us bragging rights. We can really say, come on down, Pamunkey, look at the historic uh, marker. So it, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great, it, it's, Words can't even explain it. I would just say, come and see us. It's a great place to visit. It's a great place to live. Applying for jobs with Charles County government is now easier and more efficient. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov for more information.